Welcome back to the video and in today's video, we're going to be doing a highly requested video of the underrated, most underrated offensive player in the NFL. You guys really, really liked the overrated video. It did a lot better than I thought it would. So today we are back with the recommended part two, and it is going to be the most underrated offensive player on every single team. I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys do enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel if you are new we are currently 320 subscribers we are on the road of 400 if you are new and you like the content please be sure to subscribe it really does help me out let's just get right into this video not a lot of talking let's get right into it the first team we're going to be ranking is the cardinals and the most underrated player on the cardinals in my opinion is rondale moore dude he's amazing he's a he's really really good and he's a third option but he is amazing. I don't think people recognize him as much. Because all, although he does get injured a lot, he's an amazing, just a big, like, not a big guy, but a, a really good deep threat, a good receiving option. And overall, could be easily a wide receiver number two, even maybe a wide receiver number one on some teams. Next up, we have the Atlanta Falcons. And I, I think I'm going to go with, ooh, this one's hard. I don't know who to go with here. I think I'm going to go with Cordell Patterson, actually, because I think people just don't talk about him enough because they're, they're saying that he's, like, really, really old and he's not good anymore and everything like that, but he's still that guy, and he's still that good. I think people just, like, uh, d don't think about him as being that good of a player because of his age and that he isn't a starter anymore, but you got to realize of how good of a talent he is. Next up, we have the Baltimore Ravens. This one is also a little bit tougher, but in my opinion... This is pretty easy. It's going to be Devin Duvernay. Devin Duvernay is amazing. Like, people don't understand how good he is because, again, he kind of gets overshadowed by, like, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, and Rashad Bateman. But he he is that guy, and I think he's an amazing wide receiver. Deep threat, speedy, really good. Next up, we have the Buffalo Bills. I think this one's a bit harder, in my opinion. I don't know where I would say. I think the most underrated players probably Devin Singletary because of just how consistent he is. A lot of people say he's just an average back. I think he is a solid running back. Like he's not gonna impress you. He's not gonna have the most amount of yards, but he's gonna be consistent eight hundred yards rushing, eight touchdowns, and that's all you need to have him with a pass first offense and uh the Buffalo Bills. Next up we have the Carolina Panthers. This will always be DJ Moore. DJ Moore is so incredibly good. I just think uh, people don't understand actually how good DJ Moore is. And he, he is that guy. And he is an amazing deep threat. Number one option for sure. Um, I think people just don't recognize him enough because he is on the Panthers. And they're not that good of a team right now. But, I mean, he if, if he had an actual decent quarterback, he'd be amazing. Next up, we have the Chicago Bears. This one is also a little bit tougher. I think I'm going to go with Darnell Mooney here. Because I think people don't think he's that good because of how often he gets injured. And they're like, oh, he never plays. And that is true. But when he does play, he's a really good threat. I think maybe he's not a wide receiver one in some people's eyes. I think he is a low wide receiver one, high wide receiver two. And I think he has that potential, especially because of how young he is. Next up, we have the Bengals. I mean, every single player is underrated. But in my opinion, this is Tyler Boyd. Tyler Boyd, for a wide receiver number three, could be easily a wide receiver number one. He is so incredibly good. I just think people just don't look at Tyler Boyd because there's T. Higgins, Jamar Chase, Joe Mixon, Joe Burrow. The list goes on and on. But you got to realize that Tyler Boyd's actually an amazing wide receiver. And I just don't think people talk about it enough because he is a third string. Next up, we have the Cleveland Browns, in my opinion. And this is just based on what happened last year. Jacoby Brissett. He was amazing last year. I don't think people talked about him enough. Of, I think he definitely had a way better season than Deshaun Watson. I think people don't talk about that enough because he is that guy. He's actually like a solid backup or even a low starter with that potential. He can run the ball. He can throw the ball. He can do all for you. And he's just been a veteran presence. And they should have stayed with him instead of Deshaun Watson. Next up, we have the Cowboys. I, this is always going to be Tony Pollard. Um, I just think Pollard is, in my opinion, a top 10 running back in the league, and I don't think people talk about him enough. I mean, you can see at the end of the year how good he actually played, but people still don't talk about him enough. I mean, he is amazing, really good receiving back, a lot of good speed, can run the ball, has good power. He's just all in all a better running back than Zeke, and he should be the feature back there. 
And next up, we have the Denver Broncos. And honestly, I know I'm crazy saying this. Russell Wilson is the most underrated player on that team. Because I think people, and I don't like Russell Wilson. I don't, I don't think he's a good person. But we're talking about him as being underrated. And I think he is underrated because people just thought from last year, his bad season, that it was all his fault and that he isn't even that good. But it was more because of the coaches and the management that made him that bad. And you can see at the end of the year, he started kind of balling out. And I still think he's a good quarterback. So I think he's underrated. Next to be the Lions. I mean, every single player is underrated. But in my opinion, this is Jared Goff. I don't think people talk about how good Jared Goff actually is. This year, he was insane. Like, probably a top 10 quarterback in the league this year, without a doubt. And he made the Lions almost a playoff team all by himself. I mean, not all by himself, but he was a big part of it. I think I think he's the most underrated player on that team. Next up, we have the Green Bay Packers here. I'm going to go... I'm going to go with Romeo Dobbs because I think people look about the rookie Jack and they look at Christian Watson, which I think you're right to do it. But Romeo Dobbs, before he got injured, was actually a really good serviceable second wide receiver. And I think he was a solid option for Aaron Rodgers. He was a big target for him. And if Aaron Rodgers does stay in Green Bay, he's going to be a big option for him next year. Next up, we have the Houston Texans. I mean, I, I still say Damian Pierce. I don't think that, that I, I think the end of the year wasn't really his fault because Literally, there's no help on that O-line for the Texans. There's no, there's no help on that team, for example. And he still had an amazing rookie year. Honestly, very, very underrated player. Next up, we have the Colts. I think this is going to be always the same person. It's Michael Pittman. When you think of the Colts and underrated, it's Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman is so incredibly good. Just a big wide receiver who can go up, catch the ball. If he had an actual decent quarterback and he could stick with a decent quarterback, he would guarantee be a top 20 wide receiver in the league. And that might be a hot take, but I legitimately think that's true. Next up, we have the Jaguars. I'm still going to go with... Ooh, this one's hard. There's a lot of good wide receivers there. I'm going to say Zay Jones, because I did not expect Zay Jones to play as good as he did this year, and he really showed that he is a very, very serviceable number two wide receiver. I mean, a big deep throw. He'd have those games where he'd have, like, two wrecks, but, like, 100 yards and two touchdowns. It's actually insane. Um, he's an, he's just an amazing wide receiver and a guy that you can always count on for a clutch catch. Next will be the Kansas City Chiefs, and this is going to be Jerick McKinnon for me. I, I just don't think that people thought about how good Jerick McKinnon actually did play last year. I mean, if we think about him, an amazing receiving back, can catch the ball super, super well, and also just bring a new type of energy to that Chiefs offense that they needed because they lost Tyree Kill. They needed some kind of spark, and I think he brought that in last year, and he's one of the main reasons why the Kansas City Chiefs are where they're at right now. Next up, we have the Los Angeles Chargers. I think, I think, I think it's gonna be Gerald Everett because all the other ones don't really feel like they're. I I, I think Austin Eckler is an amazing running back, but I think he's probably ready because I think people know how good he is. But you got to realize Gerald Everett has been a solid wide tight end for his whole career. I mean, whole career he's been just that stable tight end. And honestly, if you look at his stats last year, he had a really good year. And I think that, uh, Justin Herbert, that was one of his main targets, was Gerald Leverett. Next to be the Rams, I'm going to say Ben Snoronic. I People don't really think about him when they think about the Rams, but I think he was a really good wide receiver when Cooper Cup got injured. Um, just being, again, big guy, clutch catches. And um, I, for, for the amount of down that they had, I think he was one of the big uh, surprises in uphill and, like, a really good uh, player. Next up, we have the Las Vegas Raiders. I think this is going to be always Derek Carr because I'm, I'm not talking about people underrating him. I'm talking about the management underrating him. I mean, they, they think that he is garbage. I, The Raiders management think that he is the worst player on that team. It's actually insane. Now, you could have said Josh Jacobs. I agree with you. He had an amazing year. He's super underrated. But in my opinion, based on how much they just – are, they do not like Derek Carr. He is a solid, if not really good, quarterback. Top 15 easily, and people don't talk about him enough. Next to be the Miami Dolphins is Jalen Waddle here. And there's only one I answer. It's Jalen Waddle. I just think people don't th- look at him because they think about Tyreek Hill immediately. But he is a top five, possibly wide receiver in the NFL at a number two. It's ridiculous. That receiving core is insane. And he is just amazing, a, um, a second-year player, and he kept it going from last rookie year. An amazing wide receiver. Next up, we have the Vikings. This one might be a bit of a hot take, but I'm going to go with TJ Hawkinson. I mean, you look at, bro, look at TJ's stats last year. Uh, when he went into the Vikings organization, 
he was amazing. I mean, he had games where he had like 200 yards, 150 yards, 100 yards with Kirk Cousins. And Kirk Cousins, that was his main target for the last like three weeks of the season. It wasn't even Justin Jefferson. It was it was TJ Hawkinson. I don't think people see how good he is actually. Next up with the New England Patriots, I said Damian Harris for the most overrated. I'm going to say Ramondre Stevenson for the most underrated. A big running back, a power running back. And I don't think, I keep saying I don't think they think this enough, which is why it's, you know, underrated. But I, I just think that Damian, Har- um, Damian Harris is that power back. But Ramondre Stevenson brings the power that Damian Harris brought, but also can bring the speed, the strength, everything else that you need for him, and I think Ramondre Stevenson is an amazing back, top 15 in the league. Next up, we have the Saints. Uh, There's not a lot of positives here. I'd say Chris Olave. Chris Olave had an amazing year. I don't think people talk about his year enough because the Saints really were out of the playoff picture the whole year, but Chris Olave was amazing, especially with Andy Dolan, who we all know he's a low-end starter. Even though he had a decent year, I think he's top 20 at best, um, just barely there maybe, but Chris Olave had a really good year. I think probably the best rookie wide receiver in that class this year, in my opinion, just based on overall producement. Next up, we have the New York Giants. I'm going to go Daniel Jones here. I don't think people talk about how good of a season Daniel Jones actually had because he had nothing. I mean, no wide receivers to throw to the whole year. And he made that Giants team not only a playoff team, but getting past them the first round and, and making all their players look good, and I think that was mainly because of Daniel Jones. He was amazing this year. Next up, we have the New York Jets. This one is also very, very easy. This is going to be Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson was amazing this year. Another big, big rookie. It was him and Olave for that uh, best rookie wide receiver. In my opinion, it's Olave, but I think Garrett Wilson's a very, very close second. Amazing. I mean, although, and and again, like I said with Olave, he's playing with Zach Wilson and Mike White, and he's making those stats actually that insane with those two. Just shows how good of a wide receiver he actually is and how underrated of a wide receiver he actually is. Next up, we have the Eagles, Devontae Smith. There's, there's, I don't even need to talk about this one anymore. Let's just move on. Devontae Smith's incredibly good. Just like Jalen Waddle is a wide receiver number two that has that top 10 potential. And he's just, I mean, he's been so clutch for the Eagles in big situations, and I don't think people talk about him enough. Next up, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm going to say here, this one is also a very, very tough one because I don't think they had a ton of positives this year. I'm going to say George Pickens because I think he is a guy that has a lot of potential in the future. Maybe he didn't really show it much this year, but I think in the following years, just I think when Pickett starts to develop, he's going to be really good. Next up, we have the Seattle Seahawks. Ah, uh, This is tough. I, 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 you know, you could always go Geno Smith, but I think people know now how good he is. I'm going to say Tyler Lockett because I don't think people talk about how good of a season he actually had. I keep going back to this, but a wide receiver number two, and he's got that potential, and he really had a big bounce back year. And it seems like when Russell Wilson left, he seemed to play better, and he had an amazing year with Geno Smith. Next up, we have the Niners, my Niners. Uh, I'm going to go Brandon Ayuk here. In my opinion, Brandon Ayuk was incredible this year. I mean, over he had over a 1,000 yards. Oh, um was honestly probably our main wide receiver because Debo got injured so much. And honestly, him and Purdy connected super, super well. And he had a huge, huge year. I think Kyle Shannon finally gave him a chance to actually develop into that first round probable wide receiver that we we picked him at. And I think he really has developed into a majestic second wide receiver. Next up, we have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This one's also a little bit hard. I Maybe, maybe Rashad White. Because I really think he actually played quite well when Leonard Fournette was injured. And I think people don't talk about that enough. Is that when he came in, he actually had a really solid year. And I think they probably could stick with him next year. Next up, we have Tennessee Titans. I'm going to say Traylon Burks. Uh, another ra- rookie wide receiver who had actually an amazing year. I, I, I He did battle injuries. He did battle injuries. But when he, he was playing, and when Ryan Tannehill actually gave him the ball, he was a menace. And he is a dangerous wide receiver in the future, especially when he gets a good quarterback. And last but not least, we have the Washington Commanders. And I'm going to keep saying this, Travis Heineke. He is so incredibly underrated. It's actually insane. No, he's not the best quarterback ever in the game. No, he's not even close to that. But people say that Carson Wentz is better than him, and that is ridiculous. He is a serviceable starter, and he deserves to be a starter. And that's the end of my video. If you guys like the video, please make sure you really like and subscribe to the channel. Again, the growth has been amazing. 
I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.